welcome to The Gadget Show with more of the best from Planet Tech. Yes, we mean that literally because we have some of the most amazing tech from all over the world. Yeah, and our first invention comes straight out of a Hollywood action superhero movie. That's right. Well, we needed a superhero presenter to actually test it. But as Otis was uh, booked up to go to South Korea, we, um, we booked Jace. Yes! For my blockbuster assignment, I was sent to Brussels, the capital of Belgium, home to the European Union, NATO, 249 butchers, 874 hairdressers and 647 pharmacies, and the Tintin Museum and Brussels sprouts. But the very best thing about the whole city is that it's home to one of the deepest indoor diving pools in the world. I can't believe I'm actually here at Nemo 33. Inside that building, believe it or not, is a diving pool that stretches down 33 metres. It's 20 metres wide and contains two and a half million litres of water, which exerts up to nine tonnes of pressure onto the bank-grade bulletproof windows. And the deepest part of the pool is big enough to submerge a blue whale standing on its tail. Unsurprisingly, Nemo 33 is a mecca for scuba and freedivers. It's a really extreme environment. It looks like a tenement block built in Stalinist Russia in the 50s, turned upside down and filled with water. It's, it's really unusual and quite menacing. But I wasn't there to perfect my scuba skills. I'd heard about an ingenious piece of underwater technology that I hoped would make me a superhero for the day. This is the X2 underwater jetpack. This prototype neoprene propulsion suit features two arm mounted hydro jet thrusters, each powered by an 1800 watt digital motor. It's controlled with a handheld remote and it's the ultimate in underwater thrust. The notion of wearing two torpedo like water jets on your arms in that sort of comic book Iron Man style kind of bullseyed my expectation. Uh, and that's how Chris appeared. Chris Parks and his brother Simon had dreamt, designed and built this themselves. And I was about to have a go. This is the kit. Yeah, we're going to assemble them onto you in Iron Man style and we're going to put you in the water. I love the sound of that. OK, what's first? It really is a proper, handmade, experimental piece of technology. We've got this harness that we put on you. We've got a control box here that powers everything. Sensing 3D printing here. Everything, basically, you see, to a great degree, has been created in-house on a 3D printer. Well, we're really quite proud of that. So we've got this yeah. mounting system here yeah. that actually attaches the thrusters to your forearms. Oh, look at that! Oh, <laughs> this is proper like Tony Stark. Then here's the throttle. I just can't wait to get in. You know, this is about as handmade and as prototypey as it's possible to be, and hopefully still work. Finally, the X2 was all strapped on, and it was about time for me to jump into a ruddy great big fish tank. Immediately, I pressed the wireless controller and the propellers spun into action, and I was off, powering through the... Ah. Uh, powering through the... Ah, uh, hang on. Powering through the... Ah. Uh, it kept cutting out. It just goes beep, beep, it never happens. I've got to be honest, my experience of using the X2 was a mixture of adrenaline and frustration. Every time I got the X2 going, it had last just four or five seconds before stopping again. Very exasperating. The wireless transmitter, the throttle control, wasn't communicating with the receiver on my backpack. Maybe we've got an issue with this control box. We have another one that we can swap out. It just doesn't look as sexy. It works out here. I know. When I was at the surface uh, and the antenna from the throttle was sticking out of the water and the antenna on my back was sticking out of the water, everything was fine. But the propeller is designed to be submerged completely, not to be half in and half out. So I was foaming up a lot of water and not moving in a particularly efficient or quick way. We've got to get this working. Any money, yeah? You can get into my international Swiss account. We're going to make this work. This is... I'm, I'm going Iron Man on this if it kills me. We tried everything that the guys could possibly think of. We tried different controllers, we tried different engines, we changed the batteries, we rebooted. But eventually, in a last-ditch effort, we tried hardwiring the control trigger. <laughs> nothing meant that we were able to get more than about a five-second spurt out of it. But as five-second 
adrenaline rides go, I've got to say the X2 delivers. It was like suddenly grabbing hold of a dolphin or a shark. In fact, the thrusters were so powerful on the X2 that every time my arms weren't in perfect alignment, I was sent into a spin. You could almost dislocate your arm. So, although I didn't get to live the underwater superhero dream on this occasion, I still had a blast with it, albeit in very short bursts.